Howdy everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition class breakdowns of the Bard baseline class features. Now, the Bard is a very, very versatile class in D&D 5e. It, you know, depending on what type of uh, Bardic College you want to go, uh, depending on what type of spells you want to take, you can literally be a you know, a wizard type of bard, you can be a cleric type of bard, you can be a druid type of bard. So like I said, the bard is very versatile, probably one of the most versatile classes in D&D 5e, and absolutely probably one of the most strong classes also. So, races for the bard, because of your main stat, it is charisma, so you're going to want to choose something like maybe a half-elf or a tiefling to get that plus two charisma bonus, but it is ultimately up to you, so you need to play the race that you're going to be most happy playing. So, let's get into the class features of the bard. First off, the bard gets 1d8 hit points a level, so starting at first level, you will get 8 plus your constitution modifier, so basically max hit points, and then every level from level 2 to level 20, you can roll a d8, or you can take a static 5, that's if your dungeon master allows you to do that. Some DMs like you to roll, some will let you choose, I usually let my players either roll or take the 5. And don't forget, you'll also add your constitution modifier onto the d8. So proficiencies, wow, the bard and proficiencies are crazy. First off, your saving throws are dexterity and charisma. So you'll always add in your proficiency bonus starting at level 1 is 2, ending at a maximum of plus 6. Now, the armor, your proficiency is for light armor. For weapons, you can use simple hand crossbows, uh, long swords, rapiers, and short swords. And for your tools, you get, to you get to choose three musical instruments of your choice. And you can also use those uh, as spellcasting implements. And I'll get into that in just a second. Now, for skills, this is one of the things that really makes the bard shine. You don't have a set skill list to choose from, which basically opens up everything for you. So as a bard, right at level three, you get to choose three. Straightforward. Equipment, you can take this here. You know, you can choose your rapier. You can take a, whatever type of pack you want. Any type of musical instrument, you know, leather armor and a dagger. And then don't forget, if you choose this way uh, for your background, you're going to get a couple more skills. So you may want to line up your background uh, and your skills that you choose so you don't take the same thing and lose out and shortchange yourself. So your uh, background is also going to give you some more equipment and a little bit of uh, starting money. Or if you like to do it the old school way, uh, in Chapter 5 in the Equipment section in the Player's Handbook, you can forego taking the gear and the background gear, and you can roll a 5d4 times 10 for starting money. But take into consideration, you're going to have to go ahead and buy everything. It's not going to be given to you. All right, so as you can see here on the Matrix, there's 20 levels in D&D 5e. Proficiency bonus is standard for every class. It has the same universal proficiency bonus mechanic. It starts at a 2 at level 1, ends at a plus 6. Now, you're going to see that the Bard at level 1, they get spell casting. Really, it's straightforward. We're going to go into that right now. So you can see that there's a lot of things that you're going to get for level 1 to 20. And don't forget, you're going to get to choose a Bard College also. So for Bard spells, this is a really awesome thing about the bards. And you can see, the bard has their own independent spell list. So it's not like you have to, to dip from the, the other you know, spellcasting classes like the cleric, the druid, or the wizard. You can see that the bard has a multitude of spells to take. So they, they really did a good job uh, giving the bard a lot of diversity with its spellcasting. So, uh, the Bard, you start with a total of two cantrips, and these two cantrips, you're going to get to choose from the Bard cantrip spell list. And you're going to get to choose uh, more cantrips. I believe you'll get a cantrip at level four, and then you'll also get another cantrip 
at level 10 for a total of four. Now your spell slots, those are the spells that you can cast a day. Whether, you know, at level one, you saw that you can cast two first level spells a day. So that means you can cast point, you know, straightforward two first level spells. Now, as you get higher in level, you're going to get to cast more first level spells and also inherit spell levels of higher levels as in two all the way up to level nine is where the bard can cast. So by the time you know you're a higher level, you're going to get a whole magnitude of spell slots that you can cast spells with. And you, also, one good thing about the bard, you'll get a lot of spells that you can actually upgrade. Uh, for example, uh, you could take like a, uh, for instance, I'm using magic missile as an example. You can use a higher level spell slot to do to add another missile onto that and basically do more damage. Or you can use it on fireball, which is fireball is a level three spell. You know, you could hurl a fireball, and instead of using a, a level three spell slot, you can use a level five spell slot, and it'll intensify the damage uh, by another dice for every level above the level of that spell. So it's really nice, and spell casting is really versatile in in D and D five e. So your spells known starting at level one is going to be four. Now, you're going to get to know a lot more spells. By the time you get level 20, you're going to know a total of 22 spells. But when you start at level 1, you're going to only know 4. Now, obviously, when you're level 1, you're going to get to choose 4 first level spells. Because you can only choose spells that's within your level range that you can cast. And as it goes up, you'll get to choose more. Now, take into consideration, I want to show you one thing here. Whenever you are taking your whenever you're choosing your spells for your spells known take for instance when you hit level five you're gonna know a total of eight spells and you're gonna be able to cast four first level spells three second level spells and two third level spells now that eight spells known doesn't mean that you know eight first level spells you know eight second level spells and you know eight third level spells it doesn't work like that of all three of these spell levels, you know a total of eight spells. So, and you can, you know, you can mix and match those as long as it's within your spell level range. And you can also change as you level up. Whenever you level, it does state that you can change your spells known also as long as you're staying within your level range. So, that's your spell casting. And and just one more thing to touch on with spell casting: two very important numbers. Your spell save DC and your spell attack modifier. Now those are based off of your main statistic, well, your main ability, which is charisma. And your spell save DC is basically if you do cast that fireball, the target or targets affected by that fireball will have to make a dexterity saving throw. So they will make their dexterity saving throw based off of your spell save DC. And your spell save DC uh, does start at a base of eight you add your proficiency bonus and your charisma modifier so it will go up also as you put ability score improvement points into your charisma ability and as you level by default your proficiency bonus will make it raise also now your spell attack your spell attack modifier uh, works on a lot of different spells that you have to cast like maybe a firebolt spell that you literally have to roll an attack roll so it it uh, is a it's like attacking with a sword but it's attacking with a spell at range and your modifier for that is also going to be just your proficiency bonus and your charisma modifier so the number is not going to be as high as the spell save DC but uh, it, it's just for attacks now also bards get to they get to ritual cast and what ritual casting is is if a spell is labeled that it can be cast as a ritual and it will say on the spell if it can be cast as a ritual then basically you add 10 minutes on to the cast time and voila you can cast it as a ritual and it does not take up one of your spell slots rituals are really nice the way they've done those in 5e spell casting focus the spe they they don't do a whole lot of uh explaining in detail what the spell casting focus does but 
basically if you're holding like the cleric is holding a cross or your spell craft your spell casting focus is an instrument if you're holding your instrument and using the spells and that means that your spell components are basically satisfied as long as it doesn't have a gold piece value uh, you'll you'll be fine and another way to negate that is if you don't want to use a spell casting focus then you can use a spell casting pouch so as long as you have either or uh, you're fine for base spell components like bat guano and uh, you know petrified uh, witch's eyes and stuff. As long as it's a basic component, you'll be fine with either an implement or also a spell casting pouch. But like I said, if it's a a higher level spell, maybe like uh, identify, I think you need a hundred gold piece diamond. Or if you're doing a resurrection, then you're going to need a really expensive gem or focus, and and then that's when you're going to need to have that that item on you. So that's everything that has to do with spell casting. Now, also, uh, whenever you're level one, you're going to get basically your bread and butter and it's bardic inspiration and this is when you inspire others through stirring words or music to do so you can use a bonus action as long as you have one on your turn to choose one creature other than yourself within 60 feet of you who can hear you so the target needs to be within 60 feet and they have to be able to hear you and when you use bardic inspiration on that target that creature will gain one bardic inspiration die which at level one starts at a d6 and within 10 minutes that creature has to use that bardic inspiration die and the creature can use that die on a multitude of different roles such as an ability check an attack roll or even a saving throw that it makes and that I mean that just adds a lot more and it gives the bard a lot of utility to where it really inspires the party I mean that's what it's called bardic inspiration so the creature can wait until after it rolls, and this is actually involves the, 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 the rolling mechanics for Bardic Inspiration. So the creature that has this Bardic Inspiration can wait until after it rolls the d20 before deciding that it wants to use the die or not. Maybe it, it looks like a close number, or maybe it's over 20, and no, I don't need to use it. So you have to make the decision before the Dungeon Master says, you know, it's either successful or it fails. So once the dungeon master says succeed or fails, then you're not able to use that die. So you have to make that choice up and you have to be quick on your feet to let the DM know, yes, I'm going to go ahead and use this extra D6 and here's here it is. So there it is. And once the creature uses that bardic inspiration roll, it's lost. But it's really nice because you can have it cast on you again as long as the bard has another bonus action to give you another one on the next turn. So the bard, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your charisma modifier with a minimum of at least one time. Now also take into consideration you can regain any of these expended uses when you finish a long rest. So that's a, that's a keyword. And here's the, the best thing about bardic inspiration. When you level up your bardic inspiration levels up with you. So instead of a d6, at level 5 it turns into a d8. And then at level 10, that bardic inspiration die turns into a d10. And then when you hit 15th level, that bardic inspiration die turns into a d12. I mean, that is just amazing. That is just, it's really strong. So bardic inspiration, bread and butter for the bard class. Next up at level 2, you are going to get jack of all trades. Now jack of all trades is really nice too. And this is when you can add half your proficiency bonus, rounded down of course, to any ability check you make that doesn't already include your proficiency bonus. That's straightforward. So at level one, remember you get to choose three skills that you're proficient in. So you're going to get plus two and three skills automatically by default. So jack of all trades means that everything else that you have that you're not proficient in you get a plus one so I mean that's that's really strong I mean I, I can't explain that in any more detail I mean that's just so straightforward next up uh, also at level two you are going to gain another nice uh, class feature called song of rest and this is when you can use soothing music like Kenny G 
or any other kind of music to help revitalize your wounded allies during a short rest. And a short rest is one hour. So if you or any free friendly creature who can hear your performance regain hit points at the end of the short rest, each of those creatures regain an extra 1d6 hit points. It's straightforward. No need to explain that anymore. And, you know, just like Bardic Inspiration, Song of Rest also increases by dies the higher level you get to. So instead of that D6, whenever you're level 9, it's going to turn into a D8. Whenever you're level 13, it's going to turn into a D10. Whenever you're level 17, it's going to turn into a D12. So it just adds more extra healing as long as you have a successful short rest. Now, next up uh, is level 3, and you're going to get to have Bard Expertise. And so Bard Expertise makes your skills even that much more crazy. So when you get Expertise, you get to choose two of your skill proficiencies. Your proficiency bonus is now going to be doubled for any ability check you make that uses either of the chosen proficiencies. That's crazy. So you already get you so at level one you chose your three skills that you wanted so if you chose we'll just say that you chose thievery and stealth okay you're gonna get to add expertise and you're gonna get to double the proficiency so at level three you're still gonna have a plus two it's gonna turn into a plus four and then every time your proficiency level goes up it's just gonna go up with it so that stealth at level 17, instead of that plus 6 proficiency, expertise is going to make that plus 12. That is nice. Unbelievable. And that's expertise. And don't forget, at level 10, you get to choose another two skill proficiencies to gain this proficiency at level 10. Uh, unbelievable. Now, next at level 3 is your Bard College. And this is, an, is a class archetype that you can add on top of the Bard. The Bard already gets an amazing array of class features, and we're not even done yet. But the Bard College is going to add even more, depending on what type of Bard College you want to choose. So this is basically when you delve into the advanced techniques of a Bard College of your choice, whether it being the College of Lore or the College of Valor. Now, there's going to be tutorials for those class breakdowns also, and they'll be detailed in those tutorials. So, you're going to gain more features at level 3, 6, and 14. So, that just uh, adds on top of everything else that you're getting. So, at level 4, you are going to get your Bard Ability Score Improvements. And this is when, uh, you're going to get five of these, by the way. You're going to get a Bard uh, Ability Score Improvement at level 4, level 8, level 12, level 16, and level 19. And this is when you can increase one ability score of your choice by two, or you can increase two ability scores by one. Now if your, say your charisma is already 18, you can take it to the maximum, which is, as it states here, you cannot increase an ability score above 20 using this feature. So you can go above 20, but you cannot do it by the ability score improvement. And like I said, you know, you could take your uh, example as taking that charisma from 18 to 20, or if you want to take charisma from 16 to 17 and, you know, dexterity from 12 to 13, you can do it that way. So uh, also one other thing about the ability score improvement is there is an optional rule. That's if your dungeon master allows it, if he or she allows this, you can forego taking your ability score improvement and you can take an optional feat, uh, which are not in the basic free rules on the website for D&D, but they are in chapter six of the player's handbook in the optional uh, customization chapters. Now, there's uh, quite a few pages worth of these feats that you can take, but just remember, if you take a feat and if your dungeon master allows it, then you do not get any ability score improvement. You get one or the other, unless, you know, of course your dungeon master, he or she house rules that you can have both. So that's just the exception. So that's the ability score improvement. 
Now, level five, you're going to get Fonts of Inspiration. And the Fonts of Inspiration is when you regain all of your expended uses of Bardic Inspiration when you finish a short or long rest. So, remember we talked about Bardic Inspiration. You get all of your, your Inspiration points, back, your Inspiration die back, after a long rest. Well, now that you've grown up a little bit as a Bard, you're level five, now... All you have to do is have a short or a long rest, so it's even that much better. So instead of that eight-hour rest, you can take a one-hour short rest, and voila, you'll have all of your Bardic Inspiration back. Pretty straightforward. Now, next is Counter Charm, and that's at level 6. And this is when you gain the ability to use musical notes or words of power to disrupt mind-influencing effects. As an action, you can start a performance that lasts until the end of your next turn. And during this time, you and any friendly creatures within 30 feet of you have advantage on all saving throws against being frightened, or charmed and those are the frightened and charmed effects so basically if you're you know you take your action you're you you're playing counter charm nothing can have the frightened or charmed condition Be well you can but you will get advantage on any kind of saving throw so that's the, that's the great thing about it is you get advantage now take into consideration the creature must be able to hear you to get this benefit and the performance will end early if you are incapacitated, if you get silenced, or if you voluntarily end it as a free action because it won't require any action to cancel it. So, Counter Charm, really nice. Next up is uh, you got more bard, bard ability score improvements. We're not going to go over those, we already have. Like I said, you'll get them in 8, 12, 16, and 19. But at level 10, you get Magical Secrets. And this is when you have plundered magical knowledge from a wide spectrum of disciplines. Now, you get to choose two from any class, including this one. A spell you choose must be of a level you can cast, as shown on the bard table, or a cantrip. The chosen spells count as bard spells for you and are included in the number of spells known column of the bard table. Now, it's worded a little weird, but this is how it goes. If there's any two spells that you want from any spell casting class, whether it be the warlock, the sorcerer, the druid, the cleric, the wizard, you can take two of those spells if you can't even cast them on the bard list. You can take them. Now, one thing is that there's a huge point of, uh, I want to say, confusion, especially with a lot of the viewers that I have in my stream. There are th A couple of them have asked, well, you can just take a, like a wish or something. Well, no, you can't because Magical Secrets is level 10 first off, and when you're level 10, you can only cast up to level 5 spells. So, to clarify this for you, the two, cho the two spells that you choose from any spell line has to be spell level 5 or lower. You can't take level 9 stuff. It's just impossible, and that's just the way it's worded. Now, when you do this, also at level 10, you know a total of 14 spells. These are not extra spells. It does not take it from 14 to 16. You're going to have to eliminate two spells out of your spells known and add these two spells that you gain from Magical Secrets to keep your total number of spells a 14. So that's to clear it up for you guys. And one other thing, you're going to get to learn two more additional spells from any class, also at level 14 and again at level 18. So Magical Secrets is really, really strong. And it even gives you that much more control of your character to customize it the way that you want to. Really nice. Now finally, at level 20, you're going to get Superior Inspiration. And this is when you roll initiative, and when you have no more uses of Bardic Inspiration left, when you roll the, uh, the initiative, you'll get one back. This is really nice. I, I feel it's a, for a level 20 class feature, it may be a little weak, but 
still, you're still going to get back one Bardic Inspiration. Maybe if they would have adjusted it, maybe give you two, or maybe rolled a d4, that might have been a little bit better. But I just feel that Superior Inspiration lacks for being a level 20 class feature, especially compared to some of the other classes. But then again, the Bard gets so many great class features already, uh, that's probably why it's the way it is. So that is everything for the baseline bard. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, class breakdown. If you guys have any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And lastly, I do have 840 Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition character sheets on my website at tabletopping.net. And they're all on nice three-page PDFs. So if you're needing a level 10 character, go to my website. Every class is there, every archetype, every level. Like I said, there's 840 sheets to choose from, including even the Oathbreaker Paladin and the Death Domain Cleric from the Dungeon Master's Guide. So thank you guys again. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the class breakdown, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.